right so we have finally come to the final result of this section theorem 534 so let's see the statement what we already know what it's going to say but still let us see the formal statement it states that any splitting fields e and e prime of these polynomials of these respective polynomials fx in fx and f prime t in f prime t in these two polynomial rings respectively are isomorphic by an isomorphism phi which has this property which is just like what tau has tau star has tau double star has so that property is still true for this isomorphism and that is going to be true for every field element alpha coming from f and in particular any two splitting fields of the same polynomial over some field f are isomorphic by an isomorphism that is going to uh, fix every element of f that is that will leave every element of f fixed so let us now see how to prove this In the proof, we are going to use uh, quite a few of the results that we have seen so far, not only in this section, but in this chapter itself. And the proof is by induction. Okay, but before we go to the proof, still for uh, one last time, let's see the situation in a diagram. So it's like this. You have your field F, the base field, which is there, it's given to you. And there is another field, F prime. And we already know that they are isomorphic to each other by some isomorphism tau. That is there already in the background. Now, you have a polynomial fx in the polynomial ring fx. And you have a polynomial corresponding to this that we are denoting by f prime t which is coming from this second polynomial ring okay now the association between fx and f prime t is also something that we already know and that comes from this isomorphism term in this natural way say you have fx will be something like this now alpha naught plus alpha 1 x and so on say alpha n x to the power n where these alpha i's are of course coming from the field f because we are saying that fx is a polynomial over the field f now we have already introduced a function called tau star which is uh, which comes from tau and its definition is just this alpha naught tau plus alpha 1 tau t plus etc alpha n tau t to the power n so that means in getting this other polynomial from fx what we have done is that we have replaced each of the alpha i's with its image under tau because you see now these images are in this field in this second field which of course is uh, i mean uh, loosely speaking the same thing as f but still strictly speaking it's another field that is an isomorphic copy of f so now our these uh, images these coefficients are coming from f prime and we have replaced x with t so that means this is a polynomial here 
and we are denoting this polynomial by f prime t and also even before that we denote the image of alpha under tau say alpha is coming from here by this symbol alpha prime okay so now what we are given i have already made this extremely messy so let me just uh, recover the actual diagram okay this also you do not need so this is the situation now now what is given is that uh, these polynomials have their splitting fields over which they split completely into products of linear factors so those splitting fields are of course extensions of these base fields this is the uh, this is one splitting field for fx and this e prime is one splitting field for ft so what we are stating in this theorem is that there is a an isomorphism phi of e onto e prime which behaves just like how tau behaves or just like how we have uh, uh, i mean uh, defined this thing this that is I don't have it here but I can again write alpha phi will be equal to alpha prime note that this is only a definition this this equation is defining alpha prime alpha prime is just a name given to alpha tau you have alpha here it has some image alpha tau under the function tau that we are calling alpha prime here however this is not a definition this is a statement what this is saying is that phi is in fact coinciding with tau when you restrict phi on f phi is defined on the entirety of e right so you can restrict your attention only on the elements of f if you do that then phi becomes tau okay so that is the statement and there is a particular case also which has been mentioned in particular if you have just only one field and you have one polynomial over that field and you have two different possibly different splitting fields for that same polynomial then they are also isomorphic to each other by an isomorphism which now will be constant on i mean i should not say constant but identity on f that is that isomorphism will not change any element of f so in that special case this will happen okay so now we are going to prove these things now i have already said that the proof will be by induction but induction on what induction on the degree of e over f so we are going to start off also by mentioning that we apply induction on the degree of a splitting field over a base field 
we say a base field and not uh, necessarily the base field because we have two fields right f and f prime so we are going to actually offer f but we do not mention that explicitly okay so now we uh, let us look at the base case the basis for this induction if this degree is equal to one that is the smallest value that this degree can take it can be one and not less than that of course then what does it mean it means that as a vector space the extension e over f is one dimensional and in this situation that only happens when e is equal to f okay if e has something else outside of f then it cannot be one dimensional if this degree is 1, then E is equal to F. But uh, E is given to be a splitting field for our polynomial Fx. Now, in this case, that splitting field is F itself. So, over the original field itself, our polynomial will uh, decompose into a product of linear factors. So, fx decomposes or splits into a product of linear factors over e which in this case is f so over f itself. Now, what does this tell us about the other polynomial, namely the image of fx, f prime t? For that, we need to recall that just like f and f prime are isomorphic to each other, the corresponding polynomial rings fx and f prime t are also isomorphic to each other. The first isomorphism is tau between f and f prime. And the other isomorphism between fx and f prime t is tau star, which is uh, given rise to by tau itself. So we can write like that. Since although we do not need to really mention tau star only the fact that fx and f prime t are isomorphic is enough to have what we are now going to write but still let's just mention everything so that we recall also since this is an isomorphism of the polynomial ring fx onto the polynomial ring f prime t and the tau star image of fx our polynomial is f prime t it follows that f prime t also splits into a product of linear factors over f prime you can see why but still I am there I am going to say why you see uh, these two things these two polynomial rings are isomorphic the base fields over which they are polynomial rings are also isomorphic f and f prime and under this association between f and f prime and fx and f prime t 
if f x this polynomial and this polynomial f prime t are they are uh, the same thing same thing means uh, they are associated to each other so that's why when we say that f x splits completely into a product of linear factors over f then the corresponding thing is going to happen to this one also this one will also split completely into a product of linear factors over f prime okay it's happening because of that isomorphism now now what is e prime e prime is given to be a splitting field for f prime t that is an extension of f prime over which f prime t splits completely and also a minimal such extension that is an extension whose in which or over which this uh, total decomposition happens and also such that its degree over f prime is as small as possible but now we see because of this last statement that f prime itself qualifies to be a splitting field for f prime t because over this f prime t is already splitting into a product of linear factors and its degree is also the smallest possible ever over f prime that is we are talking about the degree of f prime over f prime which is one okay so we just simply write hence f prime is a splitting field of f prime t now since the degree of f prime over f prime is 1 we must also have the degree of e prime over f prime equal to 1 because we have already found a splitting field for this polynomial whose degree is 1 now if it happens that this other splitting field which actually may be strictly different from f prime but if it happens to be such that its degree over f prime is greater than 1 then that minimality is contradicted that the split any splitting field should have minimum degree so that's why this also has to be equal to 1 but then just like before just like this one e prime should be equal to f prime now what is it that we want to do in this proof we want to show that e is isomorphic to e prime and in this case that is trivial because we already know that f is isomorphic to f prime and we have found that in this special case e is just f and e prime is just f prime so we can use that isomorphism So, in this case, we have the onto isomorphism this onto isomorphism tau which is always there in the background 
from e to e prime e is f and tau starts from f it goes to f prime which now is e prime also we require something of this isomorphism right which in this case is trivially true also we want alpha phi to be equal to alpha prime now because our phi is tau itself we have this which is also uh, something we already saw before so that means this provides a basis for our induction so if the degree of uh, our splitting field that we are considering of the polynomial fx is the smallest possible over f that is 1 then whatever we are claiming in this theorem is true so this is the basis for our induction now assume that for any field f not and any polynomial fx over f0 or the same thing fx coming from the polynomial ring f0 x the claim is true if the degree of e uh, shall we call this E or E naught? We can, okay, in the text it's written as E naught. Fine. If you want, you can call this E also, but uh, that will, uh, will that clash with what is given in the statement? It will not clash actually because E is just any splitting field for the polynomial fx. However, to specifically distinguish that, uh, I mean, to specifically show that this is our induction hypothesis some symbol has been devised f not e not if this degree is less than n where n greater than 1 is some integer okay now looking at this uh, i mean whatever we have written here starting from now till uh, to, up to this what does it actually mean let's just see that also for a moment we are saying that now we assume that for any field f naught and any polynomial fx over f naught our claim in the theorem is true if the degree of e naught over oh i did not even mention what e naught is now and is some integer and let me continue from here and e naught is a splitting field of fx 
Okay, so let us now see what this thing uh, really means. So what we are saying is that if we again like before, if we have a field f naught and a polynomial f x over f naught, okay, then for any extension e naught of f naught which is a splitting field of f x and such that its degree over f naught is less than n, our claim is true. What is our claim? Note that our claim has, uh, I mean it has other things also besides these things. Other thing is besides f naught you have an f naught prime, an isomorphic copy of f naught and again some isomorphism tau is already there corresponding to which you have that isomorphism tau star uh, from f naught x onto f naught prime t and uh, under this tau star f x itself has a, an image f prime t which is here. Uh, okay, I should not perhaps write the symbol like this. I mean, if f prime x is here, that thing means something else. In uh, some mathematical texts, this means such that. But anyway, this is the setup. So, the I, I mean, uh, we are saying here that the claim is true, but we are not explicitly mentioning the uh, full claim. And also, on this side, of course, we have some splitting field E naught prime for F prime T. Then, what we are uh, saying here that the claim is true is that, then again, there is some isomorphism phi from E naught onto E naught prime such that alpha phi is equal to alpha prime for all alpha coming from F naught. Okay, so that's what we mean fully that's what we mean when we are saying the claim is true but keep in mind that here this condition has been taken that the degree of e naught over f naught is less than a so you can uh, understand why we are taking such a condition such an inequality because this is our going to be our induction hypothesis and now we are going to uh, prove the induction step in which we are now going to consider the case where this degree is equal to n. Okay. So this is extra. This diagram is for understanding what the induction hypothesis is. Let me just keep it and let me continue from here. There is one more thing that I should perhaps mention at this stage, still about this uh, induction hypothesis itself. Note that we are saying something about fields and their extensions which are splitting fields and all these things based on this inequality. Even when you consider, I mean you will have several different possibilities here. No? For example, if you, no one knows, say you uh, may have n equal to 100, then this may be equal to 99, that is one possibility. However, even when this degree is equal to 99, actually there may be many different f naughts and many e naughts which, for which this degree is equal to 99. Okay, so all those things have been taken into account in this single induction hypothesis. Our F0 is not a fixed field and neither is E0 and neither is this polynomial Fx. Okay, all of them are variable. The only thing is that we are 
uh, assuming the claim to be true when this is true. Now, let the degree of E over F be equal to N. And here we are not again mentioning what F is, what E is, because we are uh, taking this E and F to be coming from the statement itself. Everything is given there. Okay, now look at this condition. N is greater than 1. Since N is greater than 1 and hence degree of f of x is greater than 1. There exists an irreducible Every, should I write irreducible factor or let me just write it simply irreducible polynomial Px belonging to fx of say degree r greater than 1 such that Px divides fx in fx. Okay, what have we written here now? You see, if you go back to the um, proof of the fact that every polynomial has a, over any field has a splitting field in which it has all its roots, a full complement of roots. You will see that the degree of the splitting field over that base field turns out to be equal to the degree of the polynomial itself. So that's how we are writing here that the degree of fx, which is our uh, polynomial that we are uh, talking about, that is nothing but n. So, this is greater than 1. Okay, fine. But then, where is this thing coming from? Okay, so now you recall a little bit about Euclidean rings. You see, we already saw when we studied ring theory that over any field, a polynomial ring like this is a Euclidean ring. And in, in a Euclidean ring, we have, among many things, the unique factorization theorem, which in particular says, among uh, many things again, that any element in the Euclidean ring, whose, which is neither a unit nor equal to zero, is factorizable as a product. In fact, that's what the uh, statement says, but a consequence of that is that you take any element here. For example, here we have taken fx here. Okay. The fact that we are able to say something about the degree of fx means that fx is non-zero. fx is non-zero and where is this uh, fact coming from? That is because this turns out to be the degree of this polynomial and this is greater than 1. So degree exists. That means fx is a non-zero element in this Euclidean ring. That is one thing. The other thing is that in the polynomial ring, in every Euclidean ring we have a d function, right? 
which maps any non-zero element of the Euclidean ring onto a non-negative integer. And that D function for this particular Euclidean ring is the degree of the polynomial. So that degree has now been uh, seen to be greater than 1 and when degree is greater than 1 then such a uh, ring element is not a unit. Okay, it cannot be an element which has a multiplicative inverse in the ring itself. So that means our fx is a non-zero non-unit element in fx. So it has a an irreducible factor. It's like considering your uh, ordinary ring of integers, which is also a Euclidean ring. In that you consider say the element 12. 12 is of course not equal to 0. 12 is also not a unit. This has only two units minus 1 and plus 1. So the unique factorization theorem. Here also we have unique factorization theorem which has the name the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It tells us that this has a prime divisor, at least one prime divisor. There are two of course, two and three. So just like that fx also has a prime divisor or uh, more uh, strictly speaking an irreducible polynomial p f because these are the things which behave like primes that will divide fx just like here 2 divides 12. In fx we write because this division is going to be carried out in fx and that means that fx will be equal to p x times some polynomial and that polynomial should come from here okay so that's how we have this thing okay so now where can we go from here we are now going to concentrate on this px itself i have written uh, not i have written the author has written one more thing that the degree of px is greater than one why because px is an irreducible polynomial and an irreducible polynomial by definition you note this by definition is a non-zero non-unit polynomial which does not have a non-trivial factorization. So that non-zero-ness non-unitness makes its degree r greater than 1. Okay. Um, okay then where does the proof I suddenly I forgot at the the chain of thought is suddenly gone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, note that uh, the way we have fx here, we have f prime t also here. I mean, in this case, not in this case. Here also we have fx and corresponding to that in the over the other field f prime, we have its image under tau star that is f prime t. So because fx has this irreducible factor, there also f prime t will have its own irreducible factor. Correspondingly, f prime t belonging to f prime t has an if you understand what irreducible factor means it's the polynomial which is irreducible that divides the even polynomial Okay, so far I have not needed any result. I hope I have not made a mistake. 
Now, actually, we need a, I mean, we have already used a result, but we did not mention it. I mean, we did not uh, provide the number. Uh, I mean, the place where we mentioned that this these two polynomial rings are isomorphic and because of which some things will happen like we have tau star so that is lemma 533 3, but you understand where it has been used and so you just have to uh, mention that thing you refer to that thing by lemma 533 3, we have such an isomorphism and be for we because of which this this and this happen that is uh, obvious but something else will also be needed that may not be obvious correspondingly this has an irreducible factor p prime t belonging to F prime t. Note that because of our uh, everything is happening, whatever is happening in this universe, an exact similar thing is happening in that universe, and uh, that thing is brought about by that isomorphism. So here you have f x, and there is an irreducible factor p x. There you have f prime t. It has an irreducible factor, but the image of p x itself under tau star will be an irreducible factor of f prime t you understand that the isomorphism is making these things happen so that's why we write irreducible factor p prime t there may be other irreducible factors also but we don't need to consider them okay okay now now no, notice this carefully here the author writes in fact exactly what Herstein writes is this since E splits Fx a full complement of roots of Fx a full complement of roots of fx let me just simply take it down and then we will see and so a priori because here the language is the i understand the language but for some reason i cannot remember it of roots he has been able to express it in a very nice way which I am not capable of R in A R in E sorry ok so what, what does Herstein say in this line since E splits fx that is why a full complement of roots of fx and so a priori of roots of px are in e okay so what is happening here this is your e now over e fx splits into a product of linear factors so fx roughly looks something like this x minus a1 x minus a2 etc some x minus a k but this c and the a i's are coming from e that's what we mean when we say that f x splits completely like this over e so the ingredients are coming from e okay now note that because f x splits like this over e completely a part of f x which is p x because p x is a factor of f x right so p x itself will also split over e completely and 
that thing that expression which shows that px splits completely is in fact here somewhere simply it's a simple thing to consider say x minus b1 x minus b2 x minus b say n okay don't confuse this n with that n okay so this is present here itself that's what he says since e splits fx a full complement of roots of fx are in e okay because these roots are all in e in fact all the possible roots of fx are in e that is why it's a splitting field and because of that a full complement of roots of px also are in e a priori that's what this line means so that means e has all the roots that px will ever have already e has and what does that uh, make e we cannot immediately say that e is a splitting field of px just like it's a splitting field of fx because e has all the roots of px but maybe a smaller field also has all the roots of px but now we are going to say something like this thus however we just need one root for now thus there exists an element phi belonging to e such that not f p p of v is equal to 0 that is v is the root of p in e okay even in the uh, extreme case where p has only one distinct root at least there is a root and that's what we need for now so corresponding to this thing the it's the image its counterpart here in that other universe that will also have a root over its own base field I, i mean sorry over its own splitting field e prime so correspondingly there is this is the fun of having isomorphic things because whatever happens here an exact similar thing happens in the other place you don't even have to think about it and that is why isomorphic structures are considered to be actually the same thing just uh, dressed differently or presented differently Okay, so our discussion about f x and f prime t uh, came down to p x and p prime t. There exists w. We are calling this one w belonging to e prime such that p prime of w is equal to zero. Okay. Now it's time for us to recall one result. Now by theorem 
5 1 th. so we are going to recall a result from the first section by theorem 5 1 3 uh, we are going to have this the degree of this extension of f f v over f is equal to r that is greater than 1. So what is this theorem 513? Uh, can you recall? It's about the an element being algebraic or not that thing. So here what we are saying um, the exact statement of theorem 513 is just simply this. You see, you have an extension E of some field F, okay, and there is an element A belonging to E. If A is algebraic of degree n over f then this theorem states that the extension f a has degree exactly n over f now if you ask what does it mean for a to be algebraic of degree n over f that just simply means that a okay let, let's just do it uh, I mean uh, logically let's just uh, recall all the things logically starting from the beginning we know that an element a in an extension e of f is called algebraic over f if a satisfies a non-trivial polynomial over f or if a becomes the root of a non-zero polynomial with coefficients from f and if one such polynomial exists then such a polynomial also exists which has the minimum degree that minimum degree is then used to form a statement like this when that minimum degree is n that is if a satisfies a non-trivial polynomial over f of degree n but no smaller degree non-trivial polynomial over f then we say that a is algebraic over f of degree n and when that happens then this is true that the degree of this extension of obtained by adjoining a to f over f is exactly equal to n so we are saying that we have used that here but exactly how so that means we are using the fact that v is algebraic over f it is why because of this equation p being an irreducible polynomial is of course a non-zero polynomial which v satisfies okay and we also know that the uh, degree of p is r fine but that itself does not tell us that v is algebraic over f of degree r this this is just simply saying that v satisfies satisfies an r degree polynomial over f maybe it uh, satisfies a smaller degree polynomial over f but that cannot happen and the reason that cannot happen is that p is an irreducible polynomial because if that happens now then p x will itself have an irreducible factor which is not equal to p x the degree of that irreducible factor will be smaller than r but that contradicts irreducibility of p itself so that is why this equation along with the fact that p is an irreducible polynomial implies that v is algebraic of degree r over f and that is why by applying this theorem you have this okay and this r is greater than 1 now that greater than 1 that thing will play a role now
Okay, now recalling some elementary results from again the first section of this chapter, you have this. Well, not the first section, that will come afterwards, but uh, before that we have this. Also, by theorem 5.3.3, there exists an isomorphism isomorphism what are we calling this stigma no? stigma from f v onto f prime w such that alpha stigma is equal to alpha prime for every alpha belonging to f i think i messed the i messed up the order a little bit this line should come afterwards but it's not nothing serious i have just simply decided to write this one now and then this one okay and uh, this I am not going to repeat, okay, how this thing happens. You just go to the statement of theorem 533. There you will see that uh, all the things are there for you to use in a very direct manner. You don't even have to twist anything or think very deeply about the situation. V, you have uh, what? Again, F and F prime. And over F, you have a polynomial px note that now we are talking about px and p prime x okay i, I mean sorry p prime t so px is a polynomial over f which has a root v and p prime t is a polynomial over f prime which has root w and f and f prime are like before they are isomorphic by isomorphism tau then there exists an isomorphism stigma from this extension to this extension which behaves again like this and this is coming from theorem 533 and additionally we of course have this one also okay fine so now now we can use this part from the first section the very first result we proved in the first section namely that uh, a finite extension of a finite extension is again a finite extension and we also calculated the degree that one that one now we can use For some reason, I am finding it very difficult to remember the steps. Okay, so I should have written this one first and then this one, but I messed up. So here is uh, how it next, uh, how it is coming. So since this degree of f v over f is greater than 1 we have the degree of e over f v which is equal to the degree of e over f divided by the degree of f v over f 
this is where we used that result the first one from the first uh, section of this chapter and this is what this is n and this is r because r is greater than 1 this thing is less than n okay so note that now we are in a situation where at the degree of some extension of some field is less than n so it seems like we are in a position to be apply the induction hypothesis but can we do that for that to be true we have to claim that the polynomial that we are considering after all our original fx which is a polynomial over f so automatically it will also be a polynomial of this slightly larger extension of f naturally because if the coefficients of that polynomial are coming from f then in particular they are also coming from this larger field now we need to still make sure in order to be able to apply the induction hypothesis at this stage that e is still the still a splitting field for the polynomial fx when you consider it as a polynomial over this slightly larger field note that when we consider fx to be a polynomial over f0 where f0 is this fv then e still splits fx e splitting fx actually has nothing to do with this whether you are thinking of fx as a polynomial over f or over f not that does not matter in this uh, splitting thing okay it continues to split fx because e after all is the larger one which contains both fv and f but here is the next thing if there exists a proper subfield of e i think it will be better to give, give it some name proper subfield let me call it by something otherwise we may get easily confused a proper subfield what should i call it say e star okay to be on the safe side i am writing star as a suffix not using this type of things because who knows we may have this thing earlier i don't remember if it happens that there exists a proper subfield e star of e containing f not that is also a splitting field
or that also splits fx considered to be a polynomial over f not then uh, the fact that e is a splitting field for fx belonging to fx is contradicted but why because you see if a smaller sub field than e splits fx whether you, you see i have already said that this splitting actually does not have anything to do with what the base field is as long as the base fields are in fact inside these things uh, over which we are saying the polynomial splits so if it happens that there is a smaller universe than e a properly contained universe in e over which also fx splits when you consider it as a polynomial over f not then over that smaller universe fx also splits just like it splits over this uh, i mean uh, this slightly larger polynomial ring over this smaller polynomial ring the original polynomial ring also it splits but then what are we getting we are getting the fact that there is a smaller thing a smaller universe than e over which fx splits when you consider fx as a polynomial in fx and that contradicts the fact that e is a splitting field because the minimal nature of e is contradicted hence no such proper sub field e star exists and then what is the consequence of that the consequence is that just like e is a splitting field for fx when you consider fx to be coming from here e is also a splitting field for fx when you are considering fx to be coming from here a slightly larger base field thus e is a splitting field for fx belonging to f not x yet yeah, now we are in a position to use our induction hypothesis so because the base field you see the uh, degree that you see here is over f not this thing is f not no and that is less than n now that we have the splitting nature over f not so we can use the induction hypothesis so by the induction hypothesis even after going through these things so carefully if you still do not understand any part or if you find that there is some gap please let me know so by the 
induction hypothesis there exists an isomorphism phi of e onto e prime such that not notice one thing that e and e prime are just like before e and e prime but now the base field is different it's not exactly f it is f not so the thing that we are now going to write is going to be written for f not such that alpha phi is equal to alpha prime for all alpha belonging to f not but f not is an extension of f so whatever we are saying here is true for f not is also in particular true for f since f not contains f as a subfield we have alpha phi is equal to alpha prime for all for every for all the same meaning alpha belonging to f so this is something in particular this is true and that's what we wanted to prove so this completes the induction okay but something else is there no now only i am noticing oh yes i am unable to understand this part because i have not written it properly mm -hmm. so what i have written is not exactly true that is why this is not alpha prime directly but this is alpha sigma for all alpha belonging to f not and see how mistakes are made if alpha belongs to f then we have alpha phi equal to equal to alpha sigma and this alpha sigma is equal to alpha prime okay so that's how we have the thing that for all alpha belonging to f alpha phi is equal to alpha prime so you may be wondering what what suddenly went on here you see the thing is that originally we had our fields f and f prime and originally we had an isomorphism tau of f onto f prime but now we are not considering f and f prime we are considering these extensions and this and between these extensions also there is an isomorphism and onto isomorphism which is not tau it is sigma in fact that's what we got uh, from that result now you understand what i am talking about so this isomorphism just like the other ones we saw there satisfies this thing alpha sigma is equal to 
alpha prime but for what for all for all alpha belonging to f keep in mind that this f is sitting in this uh, extension inside somewhere because f not is after all an extension of f okay so now whatever we are writing here uh, which is coming from our induction hypothesis in this situation the base fields are not f and f prime the base fields are f not and f not prime and the isomorphism that is there between them is sigma okay so that is why we are writing that phi is an uh, onto isomorphism from e to e prime satisfying this originally what would what could we have written that uh, say you had e here and e prime here originally you would have written that phi is an isomorphism of e onto e prime such that alpha phi is equal to alpha prime for all alpha coming from f right but what is this alpha what is the meaning of alpha prime the meaning of alpha prime is just this alpha tau we are calling alpha tau alpha prime alpha prime is a name given to alpha tau because it's easier to write it's a short notation so actually what you should write is alpha phi is equal to alpha tau if the uh, original isomorphism is tau from where things are starting here the original isomorphism is sigma so that's why we have alpha phi equal to alpha sigma but of course after all when we come down to the level of our actual fields then we do get what we want ultimately okay so that's why now really the induction is complete Yeah, this type of mistakes are very common but the uh, great thing is that we should not deceive ourselves into thinking that uh, whatever we have written is okay if you you will see if you are following all the things carefully you will see the moment you write something wrong it it will strike you something is miss something is amiss okay the, then you should understand that yes something actually is wrong but now we are through and this is the end this completes the induction okay so the proof is in fact over but that in particular cases still there so we are not going to formally write anything about that but we are going to understand how one obtains a case from this itself so that in particular thing is in fact a corollary to this theorem So what is that particular case in the particular case we don't have two fields f and f prime we have only one field there is only one field f here also we have f that means f prime is equal to f the things however i mean the polynomial is only one polynomial and what is the isomorphism between f and f your natural identity isomorphism the identity map is an isomorphism between the a field and itself but the things that are potentially different are the splitting fields one splitting field is e and the other splitting field is e prime 
not the same polynomial okay even if you strictly uh, want to okay you say that fine i will go exactly like how i had in the original case where we had two fields fine you can consider f prime t here also but that f prime t will have the same structure in fact exactly the same coefficients as f although you may choose to write the indeterminate to be t not necessarily x but what is the reason for having the exact same coefficients because the coefficients you recall are after all coming from this function no previously what you had in place of alpha you wrote alpha tau but now in place of alpha you will you will write alpha i which is just again alpha so there is no point considering it twice so there is a single polynomial however two potentially different splitting fields for the same polynomial then this theorem is telling you that there is an isomorphism phi from e on to e prime such that alpha phi is equal to again alpha prime for all alpha belonging to f but what is this alpha prime this alpha prime is alpha tau in place of tau now what do you have i the identity function so that is equal to alpha itself so that's why in the particular case you do get an isomorphism like this but the isomorphism fixes all the elements of f it does not change anything in f when you restrict phi on f it becomes the identity function on f and this is in fact actually the statement that we wanted to prove we asked in the beginning uh, well not exactly in the beginning but uh, after we proved that every polynomial has a splitting field we then asked the question whether two different splitting fields have any relationship between them and it turns out that they are isomorphic by an isomorphism that fixes everything inside the base field now we have proved that okay so because of this isomorphism when we are given any polynomial over any field we can say its splitting field is essentially unique because of this type of isomorphism so we can instead of saying a splitting field we can say the splitting field okay and here uh, the section in fact ends but there are some examples illustrating these things which i we won't do today we in the next field theory update we are going to discuss those examples i think three of them three or four of them are there right i can't remember exactly so we will discuss them and then we will start solving the exercises so with that i end this video if you want to say something about these things you can write in the comment section below or you can uh, mail me at my usual address the link will be there in the description and tomorrow they again i forgot what i did last saturday so you understand what if if it was uh, Uh, group theory from Galen. We are going to do Lie algebra problems, or if it is Lie algebra, then we are going to do Galen groups and rings alternately. Okay, so we will see. It it will be there written in the description. Right now, I can't remember. So that being said, this is just it for tonight. Um, so see you tomorrow with uh, whatever it turns out to be. Until then this is me Lucifer from a mathematical room have a nice night